DJI sent me out their Osmo Action 3 to try out back in October last year. Now you're probably wondering, what the hell man? It's been months. Why is it taking you so long to publish this video? There was one missing feature that I just couldn't get to work with it, which I'll explain a little bit in the video. If you've seen my Mavic 3 video, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. But we'll cover that in just a little bit. Okay, let's see what this bad boy can do as your main moto vlogging camera. With the Osmo Action 3 Adventure Combo, you will receive the Osmo Action 3, three extreme batteries, a flat adhesive base, a 1.5 meter extension rod, two locking screws, a horizontal vertical protective frame, a multifunctional battery case, two quick release adapter mounts, a type C to type C cable, and a rubber lens protector. It shoots up to 240 frames at 1080p for a super slow-mo and up to 120 frames at 4K. And I've never had any overheating issues. But don't get me wrong, on warm days, this thing gets mega hot. But I've never had it turn off or stop recording on me. And apparently this thing performs really well in the cold. I've actually seen some YouTubers freeze this in like a glass of water for a few hours while recording. And it's still recording by the time they break the ice and everything and get it out. They're pretty durable. They've done really well. It has three field of views, standard or D-warp, wide and ultra wide. For moto vlogging, standard field of view doesn't capture too much, leaving the ends of the bars out of frame. Ultra wide is probably more suited to sports bike riders or riders who need the extra field of view. But for me, wide is the perfect amount with not too much warping and keeping both of the handlebars in frame. Rocksteady is DJI's term for stability and it works really well. Aside from off, we have the options of Rocksteady or Rocksteady Plus. And there's also Horizon Balance, which locks the horizon up to 45 degrees, which is something I never really use. So this is Rocksteady Plus on just wired. I feel like, you know, by the time I leave forward, let's just mount this up. And you can see that it's cutting off the mirrors. It's cutting off quite a bit. So if I was to use Rocksteady Plus, I would go Field of View, the ultra Field of View guy. Rocksteady with wired Field of View is the perfect combo for me. It allows for stabilization without cropping out too much out of the frame. Now I still get asked quite a lot what phone mount I'm using. So right here, I'm using the Quadlock phone mount and I've been using these guys for over five years now. They're super secure and hold your phone in place so that you can safely navigate your motorcycle rides. I'm using the vibration dampener to protect my camera from all those nasty micro vibrations, which works a treat on and off-road. It just keeps it all nice and safe. And also the wireless charger to save me the hassle of plugging and unplugging my phone every single time I want to go for a ride. The cases are made with a super durable TPU outer shell with a tough polycarbonate core which will last you such a long time. This one here, this one's my iPhone 11 Pro and I've had this thing for three years and I've used it everywhere. Every motorcycle trip, dropped it, mud, dirt, rain, dust, everything. And it's kept my phone so protected. But now I've upgraded to the iPhone 14 Pro and the case is so nice. They've upgraded it heaps and it's got the MagSafe now as well. So I can just blunk, click that onto my desk mount here with the wireless charger and everything's, everything's such a breeze and it feels fantastic. Oh my goodness. Now, if you'd like to pick yourself up one of these quad lock phone cases or phone mounts, use the link in the description below and you'll receive 10% off everything store wide. Everything. Or use code MOTORFEELS at checkout and you will also receive 10% off. Thank you so much, Quadlock, for sponsoring this video. Let's move on, shall we? This is how the footage looks at 4K, 25 frames a second with the shutter set to auto. And this is how it looks with an ND filter. 4K, 25 frames with the shutter set to 1 50th of a second adhering to the 180 degree rule. Now something strange I noticed here is the weird blurriness that was happening every time I would move my head left or right, up or down or whatever. It was almost like the shutter speed was too slow which is pretty weird. I've never had this happen before. If anyone, any tech heads out there know the reason why, drop us a comment. I'd love to fix this. All I did was bump the shutter speed up to a hundredth of a second and it minimized all that, but it's like not doing the 180 thing anymore. So I don't know, it still looks good though. So, you know, as long as it looks good. But I also noticed the same blurring issue when shooting at night. This was the shutter set to auto at 30 frames a second and it's not the greatest. This is the first time using the Osmo Action at night and I didn't I didn't notice that it was looking so blurry in the tiny screen when I was playing it back. So we'll be releasing a dedicated video on the perfect night settings. We're going to head out there at night and we're going to go through all of them and try to find the best, the best setting. So you can just dial that in and boom, away you go. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on that. It has a loop recording function, which is great if you want to use your camera as a safety cam or a dash cam. And you can also set your quick profiles for all your different settings with different scenarios. 
The Osmo Action 3 also has HDR video with HDR standing for high dynamic range, meaning more details in the shadow and highlights are captured, resulting in a very nice, pretty image. More colors, more, more things going on. Speaking of pretty image, 10 bit color has now been added via a recent firmware update, which means instead of capturing 16 million shades of color with the previous 8 bit, which still seems like a lot, we're now able to capture 1 billion shades of color, which is great for those who like to color grade our footage. And if you didn't know, I have a LUTs pack specifically designed for the use of action cameras, and they work with DJI's Cine like profile on the Asmo Action 3 and the Mavic Mini 3 Pro so nicely. The link's in the description below if you'd like to check them out. There's also a free one there for you to download and try out if you've never used LUTs before. But don't worry for those of you who don't give a crap about color grading. You just want to upload all your stuff straight out of the camera. Just set your color to normal and away you go. It still looks good. The batteries. Holy crap. These are fantastic. This is their new Extreme battery. Now DJI claim that their battery lasts for up to 160 minutes when shooting at 1080p. And that's shooting, that's not even standby. That's like constantly shooting, you're gonna get 160 minutes. When I'd head out on camping trips with GoPro, I'd usually take like two or three batteries just as spares, just in case, and I'd probably use them all. Now with Osmo Action, I don't take any spare batteries. Same as Insta360, they just last so long. It's so good, it's so handy that you don't need to worry about if your battery's gonna go flat or anything like that. In fact, I shoot in 4K, 25 frames, go through all my rides and all that on off all the time using the quick capture. And I come back home, the battery never goes below 50%. You're gonna be so fine. By the way, quick capture, watch this. How quick was that? Oh my goodness, so you're never gonna miss out on anything. It's so good. Also, the fast charging multifunction battery case allows for an 80% charge in just 18 minutes or a full charge in 50. Also, a nice change is the magnetic adapter. Gone are the days of unscrewing to disconnect your camera from your helmet. Now, it's super quick and easy. I was pretty worried at first when I first had it and I mounted it. I was like, man, are you sure? Are you sure this thing's gonna hold? And it does, it holds so securely. You're gonna be sweet. It's not gonna fling off your helmet or anything like that. It's gonna be where you left it. They have also included the same mounting feature on the side of the frame so that you can quickly and easily switch to vertical mode for Instagram or TikTok full on 9 by 16 stars. And you can do that at like the traffic lights, you can quickly whoop, flip it around. But I did find switching to ultra wide field of view is the way to go. You get the most out of everything and it looks wicked on socials. Okay, so there are all the features specifically for moto vlogging, apart from one very important feature, the audio. By the way, this is how it sounds when using just the built-in microphone. Obviously, you're going to get a whole lot of wind noise. If you're stationary, you're chatting along, it's totally fine. Works really well. But as motor vloggers, we need to be able to chat with clear audio. Now, I spent ages trying to find an adapter for the Action 3. I was researching for so long, for months. There's no mic adapter like a media mod or anything like that like GoPro has, or just a mic adapter like Insta360 has. And after quite a bit of research, I came to find that this adapter works with the Action 3. Super stoked that I actually found something. I gave it a try on one of my camping trips and this is how it sounded. Absolutely garbage. I was so, I was so bummed. Like, damn it, after all that, I was so excited. And this was even with the in-camera gain set to minus 12. It was just skyrocketing, clipping like crazy. So I was back to square one. Until I stumbled across YouTube channel Wheelie Good TV and was introduced to the DJI mic. Now I knew of the DJI mic, but I never thought of using it as a moto vlogging setup. It's a wireless system. I thought it's more of like a camera professional sort of thing. So I reached out to DJI and they sent a unit out to me. Legends. Now since receiving this just a couple of weeks ago, I haven't had too much time to experiment with it. So I'll be releasing a full on dedicated video for the DJI mic because the implications of this thing, I can't believe how much you can get out of this. And it's very, very exciting. But for now, all you need to know is that with this pack, you have two transmitters and one receiver enclosed in a multifunctional battery case like the one for the Osmo Action 3. But this one holds the charge so that once you place the units in the case, they begin to recharge much like your AirPods if you own a set. 
Plug the receiver into the Osmo Action and fit the transmitter into your helmet. The transmitter is a microphone in itself but has a 3.5mm jack input to plug an external mic into like a lav mic. Now here's the very cool thing, especially with the two microphones. If you'd like to capture separate audio for your bike, stick the mic into your backpack. Just like this. Boop. Hey yo. Alright, just like that, it's clipped in there. There might be a little bit of rattling. Um, this is just for test purposes, obviously. If you're going to put it in the bag, turn have your keys in there. <laughs> Recording in stereo, we now have two separate channels. One with dedicated voice and one with dedicated engine noise that we can mix later in post. Uh. Loved the T7 by the way. T7's awesome. It's so comfortable. Uh, we're going to catch up to this car pretty quickly. Okay, so we're hitting 100 k's, 110, 100 k's. Uh, love to see how this sounds. I'm talking as I would normally talk. Ah, uh, the boys, the Harley boys. Woo! <laughs> um, so yeah, there we go. How was that? How was that with the exhaust? Now, if you don't want to mix it in post, just set it to mono, and you'll be sweet. You can also adjust the transmitter gain levels so that if your parts are so loud that it's distorting the audio, you can just lower the gain level and you have nice crispy part sounds. This is wicked. This is just like, oh, oh yes. I'm so, I'm so happy about this and I can't wait to like really get into it, find the best spots on the bike and everything like that. Full on review coming out soon. Subscribe. I'm excited about this. Now I think this sounds incredible. It's probably the best sound I've ever had coming out of my helmet. I feel like part of the reason is because the microphone is just pointing this way where my Purple Panda microphone is, is all of this is on the sides and everything. So it's capturing wind from all these different directions where this is just one direction and not much wind's getting in there. You also have like little fluffy dead cats that you can use with it as well, which I used for this. And now that I have two separate channels, this means I can do away with my zoom recorder and syncing and just use these two tiny lightweight wireless mics that sound amazing. And if you're worried about battery life, don't be. You do the quick capture on your Osmo Action and just leave these on constantly. And they'll last hours and hours and hours. And then when you're done, you just chuck them in your charging case and then they just charge up in your charging case. And then you're ready to go for another whole stint. It's so good. Oh, I'm so happy about this. But yes, it does add an extra 509 Australian dollars onto the whole kit setup thing. But that's for the two transmitters and it's 379 if you just want one transmitter, which is still, it's still another cost, you know? And also it does add extra weight to the front of your helmet. You can definitely feel the weight. There's gotta be a cheaper alternative. Now coming back to this cable, I thought surely there's gotta be a way to lower the gain. And so I went rummaging through all of my little cables and everything like that. And I found this little guy. It's got a little volume knob on the side boop, 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 and it's in line. So I thought, hey, let's give that a crack. But since moving out of the warehouse, do you think I could find the loud USB-C cable? I couldn't find it. I couldn't find it anywhere. I'd be busting, trying to see if this would work. I should, I should test it, hey. Should I go get another one? All right, just for you guys. Let's go and get another one. And I completely forgot to test out the, the lav mic, the purple panda mic that I usually use in my helmet into the receiver. So that's what you're hearing now. It's a pretty windy day, so it'd be heaps curious to see how it sounds. It's all about trying and testing and, you know, seeing, seeing what works and what doesn't. Another cool thing with the new magnet base connector thing is that I can now detach this and just talk about this. How good is that? This... <laughs> The functions of wireless everything and like quick release magnet adapter thing is incredible. Okay, so this is this is it. Booyah! <laughs> this is the little guy here. For the second time, I won't lose this one, but let's see how it goes. Let's see how this sounds, hey? 
Plug her in, load her up, and away we go. I'm wondering how it sounds already. So I'm at like a quarter volume. And this is how it sounds. Okay, so that's a quarter. Wow, that takes out heaps of it. So with the volume at a quarter, it is quite low. I mean, that's a good thing. We can, really, we can only go up from here. Um, let's have a look at volume halfway. Yeah, I reckon this is probably pushing it. I'm talking like, you know, normal level volume. That's about three quarter volume. It's the worst being behind pig trucks. Oh, look at them, they're shitting everywhere. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> now this is with the gain all the way up. Obviously it sounds like absolute garbage. There you go. Holy crap, you can use this. Where is it? There it is. Your little cable here with your volume control. That will work with the Osmo Action 3. Very, very cheap. Very cheap alternative. Stoked. Actually, that's, that's wicked. I'm so stoked. Yes. Yes, guys. High five. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I'll be experimenting more with the DJI mic and its applications, which I'll release a dedicated video on. But for now, at least we know there is a way, a cheaper alternative. I'm not going to link this one in the description because I have no idea where it came from. It feels really cheap. So surely you can just pick one up off Amazon for very cheap. And this cable, it's the BYK4 USB-C to 3.5 millimeter jack. It was like $25 Australian. Maybe you find something else out there. I don't know. But I'll try to find this on Amazon and link it in the description below. The Osmo Action 3 standard combo retails for 519 Australian dollars or 719 for the Adventure combo, which is what I have. And the DJI mic retails for 509 for the two transmitters, which is what I'm using, or 379 for the single transmitter. Now, if this video helped you in any way to make your purchase, to make your decision, this is what I want to do. Please consider using the affiliate link in the description below where I receive a small kickback from every purchase at no expense to you guys. So what are your thoughts on the Osmo Action 3 for moto vlogging? Are you going to give GoPro the flick and go DJI Osmo Action? <laughs> it's so much better. <laughs> in my opinion, of course. Let me know in the comments below and while you're down there, hit like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you are new here and I will see you guys in the next vid. Oh, and don't forget to use code MOTOFILLS for 10% off all your quad lock mounting goodness. Hells yeah, hells yeah quad lock. Ciao. Oh, another phone. Yeah, I'm selling this phone by the way. iPhone 11 Pro, anyone wants to buy it? It's for sale. Make me an offer, legit. Legit though, make me an offer. I haven't put it up for sale anywhere, but I will be selling it because I just don't need it. And it comes with a quad lock case. So that's pretty cool. Full on, it's full on, ready to go. Ready to go for you guys. Make me an offer. I'm out of it. Carry out of it, I'm out of it. Ah, I'm out of it.